Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the channel and welcome to yet another conference. All honor, glory, and praise be to our one and only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, um, the words I want to convey today are get right church and let's go home. Oh glory, hallelujah. Somebody bless his holy name. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like a stroll through a graveyard to give somebody a wake-up call. Do I have any witnesses out there? There's nothing like a stroll through a graveyard to give somebody a wake-up call. Because let me tell you something. Despite what anybody may be doing today as it pertains to your daily activities, the end of the road in this 3D realm is the graveyard. Or, you know, if a person, you know, if they decide cremation. But you all get the gist of my point. Meaning that you're not going to be here forever. And I think that that has not sunk in for a lot of folk because people can get so overwhelmed and consumed with their daily activities that they think what is is going to always be and i stopped by to tell you today that it's not i stopped by to tell you today that we all have an expiration date and it's going to end in the graveyard as it pertains to your human remains so my question today to somebody out there is where will you spend your eternity? Where are you going to reside forever? You know, and the thing about it is a lot of people really don't care that much about the other side. Because, well, first of all, a lot of people don't believe there's a heaven or a hell. And then a lot of people don't believe there's even a God. But the Bible says the fool has to say in his heart that there is no God. And then a lot of people feel like, oh, well, if they go to hell, they're just going to be out of their mind and they're not going to know they're there. That's one of the biggest lies of Satan, the devil, is that you will be out of your mind and you will not maintain your consciousness. You will be fully conscious of where you are if you go to hell. You're not going to be out of your mind. You're not going to be sleep. You're not going to be in a half sleep, half awake state, which I think is some type of sleep paralysis. I think I think that's the correct term. Um, or something like that they call it and that is that state that people can go in when you're conscious in the 3d realm but you're also conscious in the spiritual realm so meaning um, you may be able to see things in the spiritual realm when you're in that having that sleep paralysis I think that's what you call it that you may not be able to see when you're fully conscious because see one thing I, I believe and I'm correct I believe I'm, I'm correct about this is that as it pertains to death, um, as a person is, uh, is finds themselves in transition from uh, one reality to the next, the more that they die to this 3D realm, the more that they become more alive to the spiritual realm. And what I, I no, not more alive, but more conscious to the spiritual realm. So, um, and I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people, uh, when they die in Christ or they fall asleep in Christ. Uh, they be, say that a lot of people say they have an experience where they saw a light, you know, and uh, it was Jesus, you know, or they were maybe they were in a dark tunnel. I don't know. And maybe they saw a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know. You guys, it's different, different experiences that people have when they have near death experiences. But I do believe that Father allows people to experience those things to come back and warn the living, warn the living that there is an afterlife. And that there is a need to care about your soul and where you're going to spend your eternity. You don't wait for a preacher to, to tell you about eternity. You don't wait for a teacher to tell you about eternity. You don't wait for any other living human being to tell you about eternity. You open that Bible and you read what thus saith the Lord for yourself. You read about what Jesus Christ said for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? The day is going to come when you are going to meet your maker the day is going to come when that body you're in right now that temple house that flesh house is going to breathe its last breath mean, meaning the lungs will not function the heart will no longer function the brain won't function the kidneys won't function nothing will be functioning anymore and the day is going to come when you're going to stand before our almighty god to give an, an account for the life that you led on this earth the bible says that the lord ponders the heart so meaning it is not by way of our works that we make it into the kingdom of God. It is by grace, God's grace, and God's mercy. The sacrificial death and the sacrificial death, which is the sacrificial death, let me word it that way, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the reason why we call him Savior is because he saved us from our sins. It's just a matter of if you will accept his blood sacrifice 
and believe and trust in your heart that on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead with all power in his hand. Because I'm telling you something, Jesus Christ is alive and well. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let this 3D realm fool you into thinking that Jesus is not alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is conscious. He's not in some dark, cold grave with a stone uh, rolled in front of it. Because, you know, if you read the Holy Scriptures, you, you will see um, that the stone was rolled away. And that stone was unbelievably heavy, you know. But see, that's the power of God. God can do anything and everything but fail. A lot of you out there are facing um, difficult situations and circumstances right now. and You really can't see your way. Well, see, that's the walk of faith right there. You must walk with a blind faith in God, meaning you must. It's just like a little child. I think I emphasized this in another conference. It's as if a child was holding a parent's hand and the child closed, the, closed his eyes as the parent led him across a busy highway. That's how we have to trust God. And I know sometimes it's easier said than done because it is within our nature to want to be our own problem solvers and want to be our own heroes. But let me tell you something. When you walk with God, when you honor God and obey God, you must deny self. Oh, my God. And you must accept the ways and the statutes and the standards of our almighty God who sees what you don't see, hears what you don't hear and knows what you don't know. Because to want to be self-reliant and want to be your own God, that's rebellion. And rebellion stems from that sin nature that we adopted from, not adopted, but that we inherited from Adam. You understand? And you see where that rebellious nature got him in the graveyard. Okay? Because God told him, he said, in the day that you eat thereof, you know, meaning the fruit, he said, thou shalt surely die. So in actuality, Adam was not buried that day, but Adam began dying the very instant that he disobeyed God. It was a slow death. It was a slow race toward the grave. We die daily. We're slowly dying anyway. So you don't just up and live, 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 live day to day and then just all of a sudden die. The body aging is a dying process. Did you all not know that? Shedding skin and stuff like that, dead skin cells, that's an aging process. That's, that's slow death because something on you is dying. Nothing on you is supposed to die. Not your um, skin cells, not your hair. Um, your hair is not supposed to change colors. Your eyesight is not supposed to grow dim. Your hearing is not supposed to be dull. Um, your organs, your kidneys, your heart, nothing is supposed to fail. Your brain, you're supposed to be able to have a sharp memory all the time, no matter how old you are. But look, let me tell you something. The body is under a curse. The body is suffering up under a sin curse. You understand? That's the reason why these bodies have to be shed. But the spirit is renewed. Day in Jesus Christ day by day if he be your Lord and Savior and if he's not your Lord and Savior then your spirit is damned if Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior you are damned right now this moment let me how does that make you feel let, let me give you all time to mentally process that right now if Jesus Christ right now is not your Lord and Savior you are currently damned the Bible speaks about those that believe not are already condemned. I mean, you're already condemned and destined for hell. A lot of people may say, well, I don't believe in hell. I'm not going to argue with you. Just take your last breath and, it, and you will know the truth. I'm going to leave it at that. That's one thing I don't do. I don't argue about anybody about their beliefs. The only thing I do is tell people what the creator of the entire universe had to say about hell. If God created hell... Who is humanity to say he didn't? Because the wicked has to be punished. Look how filthy this world is. And people live their lives like they're not going to answer to God. They give themselves over to uncleanness and filthiness and abomin abominable things and abominable people. There are people out there that are, you know, we and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But, but there are people out there that are so filthy. They're so unclean, the things that they do, they have no moral code. People that indulge in bestiality, you have no moral code. People that rape children, men and women, you have no moral code. That means there's, you have no boundaries as a human being. There's nothing you won't do. But see, those are the folk that Jesus came to die for, as he did you and I. And see, the thing, and see that's the reason why the cross is so powerful and the cross is so important because all that filth got naked.